Orc. Uh, competitive and some uh, some common common mistakes that a lot of people do, especially when starting out. I went over this in like the beginning Catherine thing, but that I'll do we do that again from the start probably with a little more structure. Okay, so the first thing I see a lot of new people do. Um, they get somewhere like here. Uh, except it would be like three high. So they get somewhere like here and uh, they'll pull this block, which you do not want to do. If you pull this block, then you can't go straight up before you do anything, you have to push it. What you want to do, uh, you never want to split the amount of space you're working with. So you always want to try to pull from the outside, either out here if you don't think your opponent's going to get you, or over here if you don't want your opponent to follow you. Uh, that's a big one, try not to split your space. Um, sorry, trying to play on keyboard right now for some reason. And another big thing that like a lot of better players would do, you'll hit them and then you'll think, okay, cool, I have advantage, I'm gonna go attack them. You'll walk here, but they'll link out of it and push and kill you. So when you hit somebody and like when you're hit, you need to be aware that after you're hit, like, you know, you're back, you're pretty much back in neutral. Like, you might be at, like, a slight disadvantage, but, you know, they can, you're, you're back in the game as soon as, uh, as you get hit. So you always need to be wary of where, what they can do after they get hit, especially with just a regular pillow hit like this, because they can just boom link, push, and, you know, they're, they're right back into it. This isn't like, you know, a game with, like, really long combos, you know, and most of you ever really getting hit is, like, one or two times. Um, so you know, it's like it's like a yeah, like a safer DP if you hit them into Seidel and they're somewhere they can, you know, you know they're right there already. And then you also be super careful if you're hitting them from a block they can Seidel to. You know, they're right there and boom, you dead. Because uh, you know. Every hit in this game is gray life until you die, like, which like brings up like the most 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 important rule of Catherine. Um, even when you're behind, even when you don't know really what to do, never give up. Never just drop. Uh, you may see like you know really good players drop because you know they they know, but like especially when you're just starting, never give up. There's like usually a solution to something. Um, which like, you know, it, it might be farming. See, I just got two, two X factors right there. And then, you know, boom, boom, you're back in it. Or it may just be, okay, I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna break stuff until I have a way up, which you would be surprised how often, you know, that really happens. It happens a lot. Um, and that's like it for like, you know, basic, basic things of like, to be aware of. Uh, another thing is like you know how to see how high you have uh, the way I think about it is like if you want to go up three spaces You need three spaces horizontally to go up. So like one two so so I use those three spaces to To go up um, Another thing is uh, when you when you're fighting in like a really really small spike space like this uh, It's usually better just to go attack them because if you um, if you try to, you know, run away, I, I, I lost the, the thing for it. If you try to run away, you can get delayed hit. And if, you know, you look up, like, me versus, I think, orange at, like, climb cancel one. Um, I try to run away from him. He hits me, and I get pinned. Uh, I'm going to see if I can recreate the situation here. But, yeah, we were, like, on a space like this, and... Uh, this is hard. You know that that's what happened so if you're ever in a small space you really want to you know just take the hit T 
taking this hit isn't bad and like by taking this hit you know now you can sidle you know you can sidle away you can sidle push to keep them from coming from you you know don't be afraid to like take away blocks that you would need uh, air quotes to climb um if it will kill them because if they die nothing matters and you know if you're in a weird spot there's there's you know whether it's farming uh or anything else you know there's usually a way up um another super important thing is uh when you're ahead like you should be climbing like unless you you know you you, you know you don't want them to like get an item or you know that you're in a very good spot and they can't really do anything and you want to keep them from getting an item the only reason you ever want to stay low when you're ahead is to keep them from getting an item um i mean really that's it like if you know they need an item to to get or they'll die that's really the only reason you want to stay low as you climb higher um I think it starts out one level falls at a time but as you like I think it's 10 after 10 more and more the stage starts falling out at once yeah so you see there two two levels fell there because of how high it was so being offensive is in this game is not only like attacking but climbing can be very offensive if you're in the lead because you're you're leveraging the camera away from them which you know they they need to see solves, um, and you're also leveraging you know the stage. The higher you go, the higher and higher you climb. If they if they don't get an item, if, or they just can't solve it, you know the stage could be gone. Even if they get the item, it might be too late. See, camera's going away. Camera's going away. And more and more, the stage is going to start falling. So when you're ahead, try to climb. After you get hit, you know, be aware of where you are and where your opponent is when you get hit. Because, like, neutral, you know, you're right, you're right back into neutral after you get hit. If someone sidling a level below you is not that disadvantage, disadvantageous of a state to be in. You know, because, you know, now, now they can push. Um, you may see people do this. When you're sidling, you actually are invulnerable. You, uh, hold on to me. You're actually invulnerable. So, if you if you ever see someone sidling, uh, most you know new players aren't really gonna do this. But if you see like a you know, if you see other players, higher level players sidling, they they they're trying to bait you into trying to hit them and then either taking this space away from you or, or something. Um. Yeah. Another thing is uh, be careful uh, when someone you know. It's seemingly coming to attack you. You know, they, they, you see them push this block over here. You're like, oh, they're coming. I need to go do something. I want to go hit them first. I need to. They pull. You know, you just always want to be aware of like. You want to like, start seeing blocks that if are if they're not there will kill you as like a red space, a danger space, and like once you start seeing that, it will help like, help you make better decisions in like okay, in in like what mind games can be played. Because if orange does this, oops, I didn't need to pull that. Ugh, sorry, keyboard's hard with one hand. You know, if orange does this, and you know, he pulls it, you know, I go attack him, he pulls it, you know, here it's not that bad because there's a floor underneath me, but in a couple levels, that floor's not gonna be there. Or if you're both, if you want to push and they go to pull, it goes into you climbing. So always be aware of that. If you think they're going to, you want to you want to climb cancel. Ooh, it's hard. Ugh, yeah, I can't do it. Uh, with you know one hand, you know they say climb cancel. I, it's rough. It's hard to do. I think you have to like be going for the climb cancel. Um. Like I think you need to go for the block. With I don't think you can react with the climb cancel ah. yeah but generally it's, it's usually safer to be the person trying to pull the block away 
So often if they get there just a second after you, they'll pull. Because if you go to climb, it takes longer than to than if you were go to, going to pull it. Um, I think that's it for like this stage. I'll go over some quick, um, some quad stuff, and I'll go over what just happened on Cathedral because it matters more there. Did I go to return to Tidal stage select? Ah, whatever. Ooh. Um, so yeah, quad, uh, this is every new player stages worst nightmare, um, because it's very easy to die if you make one mistake, because there are no items in classic. Uh, so this stage usually really comes down to like, you know, maybe two or three interactions before, you know, you just lose. Um, there are two ways to start off the stage, is old quad where you pull from the middle, and if both players does do that, we call it old quad, because that's how everyone used to play it, and then it's pulling from the outside. And then when you pull from outside, you want to pull in like that. And no quite, you just want to pull, 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 pull straight up. Um, so of course, with blocks, with ice blocks, you always want to sidle. But you all, but you may get into a situation where, you know, you both want to pull this block. And if they if they get there just like a hair ahead of you, you know, if they get the push. Um, if they pull the block before you, you, oh, hmm, I don't want to say this. If you and your opponent are, um, don't never pull from the middle. It's always, it's almost always bad. Um, if you and your opponent are ever gunning for this block right here, when you pull, you want to tap. Do not hold the direction. If you hold the direction, uh, you will slide like that. Um, so yeah, never. Yeah, see. Um, so yeah, that's just like a, a big thing. People will, you know, what I like to do is like if I notice that I'm a little bit faster, I'll delay like just a second, just like a there's the briefest time to fit to make it seem like they got there first and I'll pull. Um, cause I usually know I'm going to get it. Yeah. And, uh, linking your, your pulls into sidle is a uh, very important on the stage. Cause like it's, you know, that's what decides who's going to get to that block that you need to first. Oops. Cause it always starts like this wherever you know, you're they're pulling, pulling, pulling. But by the time you get to this level, um, a randomly generated like dark block will appear somewhere which means you can't just keep doing what you're doing and this is where the first interaction happens. Um, let me just keep climbing because I want to show you guys a paradise. Perfect. All right, so see this dark block at the end of this row right here, can't push it. Oops. Uh, pushing it like this we call it a paradise because uh, it's a great position to be in. Because then, you know, they have to do so much before they can uh, get back in the game. So if you see your opponent do this, oh, crap, crap, crap. Uh, if you see your opponent do that, you just go the other way. It's usually faster. Or you can catch it. Catching the paradise is just pulling the block. Uh, let's see if we can get another one. Oof. I'll just do it one at a time. Hey, what's up, Silent? Are you ready to uh, do the thing? Uh, but yeah, so catching paradise. If you if you can get here fast enough, what you want to do when you when they pull, boom, and now you caught paradise. 
now. You can keep climbing and stuff like that. Um, that's all like the basic stuff I can really think of to talk about. Um, oh, I guess. Nope, stay select. I'll talk about winning the idiot push because a lot of new players will do that. Uh, real quick, and how to judge whether you are the person winning the idiot push. So the idiot push happens when both people go for the Australian opening, which is just taking the stairs. So you push, this drops, you push this out. And then what you want to do is you want to push this out there. But instead of, hmm, yeah, let me show the opening first, I guess. Um, so you, you push in once and then you push and then you climb to the other then you before it falls get on that block that you that you took out uh, um, The 80 push happens when you you know the other person doesn't let you do that because they're, they're also trying to push it there you need to push it twice before the the thing can fall So do something like this but then they'll push, then you'll push. We call this the idiot push. Oop, nope, this way. Right now, blue is winning the idiot push because blue can come on this block right here. If if you get trapped into the center thing, you're into the center hole, you're losing the idiot push right now. Because all blue has to do is do this, wait until you don't have space anymore, you know, and then climb up. If you're both not letting um, if, and if you're both not letting the other person win the idiot push, uh, you know, you're both, you know, making sure that that doesn't fall, you don't get into that bad position and you see neither one of you are going to give it up. What you want to do is you want to pull as the, the level's falling because every action has to complete before in this game, before another one will happen, which is why I, I, I kind of think the delay hits happen. So if you pull, you'll finish the, that animation. Uh, let's see if I can time this. But yeah, if you pull as the floor is falling, you will, uh, you'll, instead of getting a draw, you'll win. Um, I just want to get this on camera real quick. kind of hard when there's a just to do it from a thing but if you if you can get the timing um that's how you're gonna win the idiot push uh, unless unless you know they do it too or unless you're in slow fall or something but that's not important uh yeah that's that's really all i wanted to go over um i might go over hit priority i don't know Hey Sonic, you still here? We can ask, I can switch to a TSS if you want. This isn't priority isn't super important to for people to know about, I guess, right now. Oops. Okay, yeah, just let me know when you get back, um, and I'll, I'll set up uh, Twinkle Star. Do you want to play on Steam, or do you want to play, I think I have a ROM of it that we could also probably use. I don't know if that, how that works with Parsec, though. I will, we'll talk about it when you get back. Um, so... Uh, priority, uh, this is more for, I guess, intermediate, advanced, 
players. I guess you could start learning about this if you're really new, but it's not going to be super important. So on same frame interactions, uh, blue wins. Oh, what the? I thought blue one. Oh, God. What? That's not how that should work. But you, yeah, so on same frame interaction in regards to hitting blue wins. Um, if you need to turn, God, turning, if you need to turn before you hit, oh, same thing. Uh, where are my notes at? So where it changes is if people are changing levels. Um, for these first two spaces after you change level, you should win. And then every level, sorry, level, every block after that, it, uh, it flips. So on three, five, seven, um, the person not changing levels will win but on one, two, four, and six. So let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five. So uh, blue should win this. Oh, oh first two. Uh, so two. Uh, man, I need more space in this. Okay, so orange should win this, and then I think blue should win this, yep. And then orange should win this, yep. And it just flips like that. Uh, what happens when they both move? Uh, let's see. And then with this, you can, if you delay your movement, you can win the interaction. So I think orange wins this, yeah. But if I wait for orange to come up and then go, uh, blue wins it again. And then it goes like that, so on and so forth. So if you want to win an interaction that you shouldn't win, you need to delay, except for the first two. Uh, for the first two, you will always lose like that. Um, which is interesting because a lot of time when people have this position and someone's like sliding on the level below, what they'll do is they'll do this so they can react and then, you know, the person moves side to side, try to get up. Um, I actually don't think that's the best thing to do, especially when, uh, there are no blocks around. Uh, and for anyone who don't, who doesn't know if, uh, if there's only one block that you can snap, that you can grab when you hit grab, you'll instantly go there. So you can insta grab, um, push. So instead of doing something like, uh, like this, where you just kind of like, can you even, I don't actually don't know how this works. Um, okay. So you, so you do run that. Um, but especially on longer, on like, if it was, so if it was something like this, instead of trying to pulling something like this, I would just stand here. Uh, especially especially if they're in a position where they're, they're only sidling below you. Um, because, you know, you can react to them coming up and hit them before they can do anything. Um, yeah, past like, you know, right now really past like the first two blocks, I don't really think about it. I, I do want to internalize um, larger spaces. To, uh, I think like up to five would be just like the most like uh, 
functional to keep in mind without it slowing down my decision making. Right, when I found it, because like, because it was, it was Wobbles who'd maybe think about this back at like Frosty's 10. Um, he was like, yo, why did I lose there? And I was like, I don't know why you lost there. And then that like really inspired me to think about the, start thinking about like hit priority and stuff like that. And like, you know, and this was like, you know, back before when I was still kind of like down on myself for like not having a scene and thinking that I could be, you know, that I should be better. And then like, you know, there's nothing in this game you can't test alone. Um, so it really like inspired me to like really look look at the game, and I really tried to like in internalize all interactions I can, so I don't need to think about it when I play, because like other than I think you know versus Shas, and then you're pretty much like playing Shas is really the only time I need to like super super think about what i'm doing because of how it's something about the way he plays it and it just like because he'll flip his his strategy so quickly so he's like the person that like i really like need to be thoughtful about um and then versus you when we when when we did our last imperial match because that by the end of it i needed you were just straight up beating me in the head-to-head -head. So I had to start going for slower openings just to give you that head to head so I can try to come back with either items or blocks and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's like that's that's like basic priority stuff. That's like really all I know about it and uh all that I really think is useful about it. And then as uh as you go up and down um blocks you, you you know you you it like you know resets your momentum to two or something like if just walking gives you one momentum going up and down gives you two momentum for those first two blocks that's how i think about it even you know that might not be how it works but i that's how in my head i i justify every i justify this um so yeah every time you move a level your your momentum set to two um so like right here both players have two momentum um, but by the time you get to three, it resets, and then like it goes one, two, one, two. So if I see someone come up, I wait, go up. I, w I don't do this now. It's something I need to start incorporating to my my play. If I want to, you know, start getting like, if I want to start winning pillow fights more. Um, that's all I can really think about. Everything that you know. That I think about and I talk about, I I have public notes over on the competitive Um Basically, from the time I started this game until now, every time I I need to look at something or you know when I analyze my matches and I notice mistakes, I post it there. So, for people who want the the skinny on how I think and you know how I look and get better at the game, just like just those notes. That's really all I did for a very long time is take notes and just like really think about interactions outside of the game. So when I when I am playing, I can just, you know, it's it's natural at that point. But yeah, this is something that I, I want to get, that I want to get in, a, in my play. Um, and you know, I need to set up situations like this where like, you know, if they both move at the same time, who wins and stuff like that. Um, kind of like a, I guess uh, not like, uh, kind of like a, a go death thing. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly, you know, if I can internalize, you know, small spaces like that, I think it'd be super useful for planning things and winning more interactions. Um, but yeah, that's all I really wanted to uh, to go over and talk about. Uh, two player, one controller, or keyboard and controller in hand is hard. I'm down one USB port because my roommate has something plugged into it and I don't know what it is and I'm, I'm terrified to take it out. 
Um, oh, I guess back to the common mistakes thing. Um, you never want to throw your block when someone's waiting for it because you are super, super negative if someone if you throw a block. Uh, what's my block throw button? I think it's this. So yeah, and then also as someone on the other side, when you throw a block, you can react to the, to the animation if you know they have nowhere to go and they have to throw the block here. And just, you know, we call it walking on sunshine. If you do it fast enough, the block doesn't even spawn. Um, which I think might be a bad thing. So I think you want to, I don't think you want to do it immediately. I do think you want the block to spawn because it can put you, it might one day put you in a situation where you have nowhere to go, especially on stages like Clock Tower where there are cracked blocks and, you know, prison if, you know, you play Gentleman's Prison. Um, or if they, you know, they just DP a block away from you and now you're in a very bad spot and they have more stage to get back around to where you were. Um, but yeah, working on Sunshine is super important. And then if someone has a block in their hand, um, what you want to do is you want to take this hit. When you come up, as you, when you come up from Seidel, uh, you can walk away. Which you, you if the, if you see a block in their hand, um, you know you usually want to take the hit, and then you know maybe tr and then you know try to do something maybe like parry or something. Um, but that's like more advanced parrying is kind of difficult. Especially when you can't turn on command on a keyboard. Yeah, also, you, uh, whatever controller you're using, always you just want to practice uh, turning. I, I can't do it on this controller quite yet. It might be moving hitbox. I'm not sure. I think turning... Um, Actually, it's probably moving hitbox because I'm not actually sure. Because I I don't think you can um. Actually, if you parry. You don't want to go for the parry. If you if you if you go to parry, you'll actually die. Um, you want to either take the hit or come back down. Especially on stages like Imperio, um, where there are traps that you have no choice but to die. Um, because I actually don't think you can parry here. Because I don't think your hitbox goes up. I think you need an open space in front of you to parry. Um, I can't test it because I'm currently on a... Uh... Yeah, if they if they pillow hit... Yeah, we're alright. If they... Uh... If you, you know... If, you, if you're not hit immediately upon coming up, they're mashing. Because you have to mash very fast. You have to mash pretty fast to, uh, to get the block out. So it turns, if, if they have a block in their hand, it turns into a 50-50. Where, you know, they hit you, they have a block. Uh, when you come up, if you think, you know, if they don't hit you immediately, turn, you know, turn and hit them. But if, uh, you know, it, it might just turn into this or that. Um, but yeah, blocks are fun. The block kills are actually my favorite thing in this game. Uh, especially on Imperial because there are way more situate there are like cool situations where people have X Factor and you're under a block and they try to leave and like the only thing they can they can do is either go down or die. So it's a uh, it's super fun when uh, it happens. You feel very smart about it. <laughs> there it is. Can you do it on turn? Yeah, yeah. Very hard to do on keyboard. Kind of hard to do on this NES controller. I miss my PS3 controller, which I'll probably try to hook up eventually. Um, 
But yeah, that's 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 pretty much it for Catherine. I get. I think I'll do a, an altar run, and then start uh, setting up for Twinkle Star sprites with Silence. Sign, are you cool if I stream Twinkle Star or do you want to do it offline? I don't, it makes me no difference. 